In this presentation, we'll take a look at adding capital expenditures from the bank feeds into our QuickBooks system. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. Note that if you don't have the Get Great Guitars practice file and you want to follow along, you can do so on the free Intuit, uh, in the Intuit file, the QuickBooks file they provide online, which you could Google search for or any type of browser that you so choose. Search for the QuickBooks online test drive quickbooks online test drive that's what they typically call it uh, but if you look for a sample or something like that i'm sure you'll find it test drive and you could use that they do have bank feeds in there you can't really import them but you can kind of manipulate them and play with them and get used to them in that feature as well back to get great guitars we're going to open up our report so we can bounce over to those items once we enter the data into the system so we're going to be opening up the balance sheet our favorite balance sheet report and we're going to change the dates up top for it going that back up top changing the dates from 010120 to 123120 and run that report then I'm going to go and duplicate the tab so we have it open and we can be working on the tab to the left. I'm going to right click on the tab up top. I'm going to duplicate that tab. Then I'm going to go back to the tab to the left and we're going to do the same process for the P&L profit and loss income statement. We're going to go down to the reports down below. We're going to be looking for our favorite report and that's going to be the P&L income statement. There it is. Took a little while to process there. We're going to be changing the dates up top in a similar fashion as we did with the balance sheet. Scrolling back up top. Dates being from 010120 to 12.31.20. We're going to run that report. Let's do our similar process. I'm going to right click on the tab up top. I'm going to duplicate that tab. And notice it gives us the name and everything for it. So now we have the balance sheet on the right, the profit and loss, and then the data or where we, where we can do other stuff other than look at reports. All right. So we're going to go to the balance sheet. I'm going to close up the hamburger. I'm going to hold down control, scroll up just a bit so that we're at that 125. We're going to be looking at transactions now on the bank feed. We have to be careful for some type of transactions that come into play. And those transactions, for example, the ones we're concentrating on here, are items that if we spent a large amount, and you might just like give a line like a dollar amount, like $500, anything over $500, you might say, hey, I should go in there and, and analyze a little bit further, or maybe $1,000 or whatever your line is and say, maybe that's a purchase of something that should be capitalized and therefore this would be going from a cash method to an accrual method but again it's one you kind of have to do for example if you were to buy like a thirty thousand dollar forklift even someone who's on a cash basis that paid thirty thousand dollar cash shouldn't wouldn't want to just record it as cash because even on their tax return even if they're on a cash basis the irs is going to say no you have to capitalize that and so we have to we have to pull that out so when we see that kind of transaction note one it's not a normal transaction in that it's not something that happens all the time. We don't buy $30,000 forklifts like every day. And therefore, it's not something that's repetitive like the utility bill and phone bill. We need to go in there and kind of pick those ones out and then decide where we're going to put them. Also note that we might use the same kind of uh, vendors. We might be buying the forklift from the same place we buy other stuff, supplies. For example, if, you, if you we're looking at uh, Home Depot then we might go there and buy some large piece of equipment there and we might go there and buy small small supplies there as well and we'll have to differentiate these large pieces of of purchases from uh the small items even though they have the same vendor and that's tricky because note quickbooks might try to memorize the vendor you'll recall and then record everything say to supplies when really there's multiple different things we buy at home depot that we need to categorize differently in the system so how how would we do that well if i go back to uh, the first tab over here, I'm going to hold down control. I'm going to scroll down a bit back to 100%. Remember that in, when you do the data input screens over here and not the reports, you, you really want to be at 100% usually or QuickBooks sometimes does some funny things. Things won't pull up right. It doesn't know how to you know modify the screen when you scroll in sometimes. So I go back down to 100. I'm going to close up the hamburger and here's going to be our data input now i'm going to go through this and i'm going to say i'm going to do the i'm going to do these later i'm going to do the receive payments later i'm still look i'm sorry yeah the receive payments later i'm still looking for the spent items and i want to go through the spent items so i'm not going to look at e-trade i know that's an investment we put money in stocks and bonds or something here's one to office depot and it's for sixteen thousand dollars so we bought something for sixteen thousand dollars that's that's probably above the limit we're going to say that's pretty that's pretty high that might be something that we may need to capitalize rather than expense so once i see a transaction that's over a certain a certain limit i might go okay i need to do something different with this 
So that's the one we'll, we're going to focus in on here. And let's go ahead and, and give it more detail. I'm going to open this up. It put it to uncategorized expenses again. So obviously Office Depot is correct. The payee is correct. But then uh, we're, we're not going to be putting it to, uh, to uncategorized expense. So we're going to open that one up. And I'm concentrating on the ad item here. You really want the vendor. So remember, you really want the vendor. It may have a description column and give you the description information. Uh, and, and you might be able to, to pull over, obviously, the description information into the vendor, typically. Because that's going to be part of the description that's in the bank, the bank data, typically. So then we have the category. It's going to uncategorize, which is basically QuickBooks saying, hey, I have no idea where this goes. I'm just going to put it to uncategorized expense. Now we're going to then adjust this and these large dollar amounts we're going to want to put not to an expense but typically to a fixed asset. So over on the right I'm looking for something that's going to be a fixed asset type of account rather than a property plant and equipment. So here's uh, the furniture and fixtures. I'm going to put it there and we can also get an idea of this if I look at you know the prior period if I look at the balance sheet and scroll up top and we look at the checking account. You'll recall that we we did do this in the past. Now, this isn't going to be one of those kind of items that are as repetitive, but I might look for Office Depot in, in my cash account and say, well, do I have any other things in there from Office Depot? I had, here here's the Office Depot, here's 16,000. Again, we mirrored the same thing in January as we're doing in March. And you can go and look at that transaction. More difficult to do with these ones because they don't happen every month, but you can still kind of do it. You can look at a vendor and say, I don't go to that vendor much. If it's a place where I buy forklifts that I don't go to much, but I bought one like three years ago, then you might go into the cash transaction and figure out you want to probably do the same thing. You can say, oh, well, here it is. It went to Office Depot and then we categorized it to the furniture and fixture. And if I look at the detail of that account, it's a fixed asset account, not an expense account. So we're going to capitalize it. In other words, I'm going to close this back out. I'm going to go back up top. We're going to go back to our report summary, we're going to mirror that same thing over here. So I'm going to go back to the tab to the left and we're going to be putting it to the furniture and fixture. We're not going to have a customer we're going to apply it to. Memo would be great, but we're not going to apply one here. Uh, and then we have the edit this transaction and notice what it says here. We'll set Office Depot to furniture and fixture from now on. I'm not sure we want to do that, right? Because I might buy something from Office Depot that's not over the dollar amount that would need to be capitalized or something I don't need to capitalize, whatever your rule may be for that. So I'd say, I don't know, let's let's check and edit that. Leave Office Depot uncategorized. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to say, hey, uh, you know, I want to leave it uncategorized now because I don't, I don't think everything I buy from there is going to be going to uh, furniture and fixtures. I want you to tell me that I bought something from Office Depot and I might have five different categories that go to Office Depot that I'll have to, that I'll have to figure out. So that might be something you need to do uh, with, with some of these categories that don't have a vendor that applies out well uh, to a category now later on we can think about rules well can we set up rules that maybe are more complicated like maybe i can set up a dollar limitation that if it's over a certain dollar amount that it automatically capitalizes and goes to furniture and fixtures or, or equipment as opposed to under a dollar amount where it goes to office supplies or something like that we'll talk more about about rules later but just now just realize that when you do the first month worth of data if you're talking about a vendor that has multiple different expense accounts that needs to apply to QuickBooks will try to memorize that vendor and you may not want it to do so because it may get it wrong. And so on those particular vendors, you might go back in here and first just say, hey, don't apply anything out. Then I'm going to go through this thing. I'm going to apply it out the proper way to the accounts that I think it should go to by manually doing so. And then I'll think about setting up kind of rules possibly uh, after I've input this data for that process. And maybe I can't, maybe I, there is no rule and maybe I just have to say, hey, don't apply anything there. And every time you go to Office Depot, I'll figure out the one of five accounts that I got to apply it to uh, for that particular vendor. So I'm going to go ahead and say add. And there we have that. If I go back to the uh, balance sheet, then hold down control, scroll up and we go into the checking account. If we go into the checking account, and scroll back down then we have there's the office depot if i go into that you'll notice it's a, an expense type form which is kind of like a check it's basically you know a check without a check number it's going to be decreasing the checking account if i then go into it there's our expense account it doesn't go out back into the bank feed same form that we used last time don't let the term expense throw you off however there is no expense you know in this form no expense account is being affected it's just using the expense form you can remember that form as just basically meaning 
it's like a check, meaning the checking account is going to go down, but there's no check number. That's what, it, that's what this basically means. Usually the other side is an expense, but doesn't have to be necessarily as it is not in this case. So we have basically, uh, you can see here that the expense means the checking account's going down and the other side is going to go to furniture and fixtures, not an expense account here. It's going to, this is going to a fixed asset account, a balance sheet account. So uh, don't let that form name uh, throw you off. You're going to use that form even when you don't have an expense involved. All right. And then we're going to close this back up and we can see the other side here on this is going to furniture and fixtures in a split column. If I go back up top, then go back to our reports. The other side uh, you'll see is up here on the balance sheet, not on the P&L, not on the profit and loss, no expense. It's in the furniture and fixtures. If I go into the furniture and fixtures then, and we can see down here, we have the 319 uh, for the Office Depot. There's the expense. There's the other side of it. There's the 16,000, the split. Then, of course, going to the other side, we just looked at, which is the checking account. So then I'm going to go back up top and we'll uh, go, go back out of this. If I go back to the P&L, the profit and loss, there's no activity in the profit and loss. Let's, for example, see this just for the month of March, which is 0301 uh, 20 to 03120. And I'm going to go ahead and close the burger and run that report. And if we scroll down, this is the only data we have uh, for March because this, this data rolls over. We had the two month January and February. It rolled into the balance sheet. Now we just have March March's data. And also, by the way, if, you, if you've been working a, a long QuickBooks problem with us, I, I got rid of the reversing entries just so uh, there's no entry in March, just so we could see something clean in March here and see what the effect is simply on these transactions. So this is just the bank fee transactions in March related to the income statement, P&L, or profit and loss. You'll note there's nothing here related to the furniture and fixture. All we have is the utilities, which we entered last time. That's because we didn't expense it. We put it on the balance sheet because it was over a certain dollar amount. We will expense it. How? In the form of depreciation, which small companies are often dependent on their tax preparer or CPA firm to help them with that kind of adjusting entry at the end of the year. So we're then going to go back to the first tab. We'll do the same process down here uh, for Amazon. So Amazon, it made green. It's trying to help me out with the green. You may not have that if you're working from scratch. It's trying to help me with that rule, basically. So we, it has it going from Amazon to furniture and fixture. Now, again, I, I may not want to go into furniture and fixture because I might have different things from Amazon. It just so happened that last time I used Amazon, I bought something large that I wanted to capitalize. And we're going to do that here, too, but it might not be the general rule that we want. So same kind of scenario. Now, this one, note that it recognized it over here. So it recognized it. This is where on the second tab is where you could say, here's the recognition. Do we want to just simply add the recognition or not? I'm not going to add the recognition at this point because, again, I might have multiple types of things in the future. So I want it. I want. I would like um, the system to basically tell me if I purchase something from Amazon so that I can apply the the account. And then, if I open this back up, at some point in time, if I can figure out a rule that applies, like a dollar amount rule or some kind of other rule with regards to the more detail of the description from Amazon then maybe I can set more, more complex rules to, to make the data input more easy. However, if I can't do that, and I have something like Amazon where I buy a bunch of different things that might go into like 10 different expense categories or like five or something, then I'm, I'm going to have to go in here and manually check it. I mean, I might make a default right here and say that uh, furniture and fixture probably wouldn't be the default. The default would probably be something like office supplies and then and then I'd have to go in and adjust it if it's over a certain dollar amount. Or So one way to modify this would be to create rule from this transaction. So we'll talk a little bit more about rules later. So I'm not going to uh, get into that now. We're just going to record the transaction here. So I'm going to go ahead and say add. So there's the furniture and fixture transaction. If we go back then to the balance sheet. And then I'm going to go back up top and go back to our uh, balance sheet account. And then I'm going to hold down control, scroll up a bit to get to that one, two, five again, scrolling back up to the checking account and then going into the checking account. We should be able to go back down and say, okay, what did the QuickBooks do this time? Here's another expense. Here's for Amazon. There it is. 7,000 Amazon. The other side's going to furniture and fixtures. So I'm going to select that item and uh, go up top. There it is. Uh, the expense here, closing this back out and uh, going back up top and then we're going to take a look at the other side of the transaction which went to 
the furniture and fixture going into the furniture and fixture and there's the other side for uh amazon and then the split shows the checking account now here note we're, we're assuming that we also paid cash for the furniture and fixture you might be thinking well wh what if i bought something large that was uh like a furniture and fixture and i financed part of it i only paid a down payment or something like that like for a forklift or something like that and then i financed the rest of it well, that's going to be a more unusual transaction. And again, we're going to typically need to do something a more, a little bit more complex than a simple uh, bank feed. You know, the bank feed is only going to show the deposit. So we're going to have to put a few things on the books. We'll take a look at something like that in the second month uh, where we have, well, where we will buy furniture and fixture, a capital asset, and we'll finance part of it. And then you're, you're going to think, well, how can we, how can we enter that into the system? For now, what I want to just point out is as you do the bank feeds, if you have amounts that are going out that are over a certain dollar amount, you, you one, you want to think, do I have to capitalize this rather than expense it? Uh, do I two, do I need to think of some kind of rule that I can put in place so that QuickBooks doesn't incorrectly categorize this expense? And three, um, is this something that was partially financed? Is there something other than cash that was purchased here? Uh, if I have to put something on the book as a capital asset, and then how would I do that? How would I put it on the books as a capital asset? Now, if you're a cash-based system and you work with an accounting firm, then you might, if, if for example, you only paid 7000 and you financed the rest of it and you're basically doing a cash transaction and you're recording that to furniture and fixture, let's say it costs 15000 and you paid 7000 financed the rest, well, then you can put it on the books here for the 7000 increasing the furniture and fixture, and then tell possibly your accountant at the end of the year, hey, I financed this, I have a loan, I put the cash that I paid on the books for furniture and fixture, and you know, could you figure out the difference? And they could do an adjusting entry, hopefully, for the, the cost of the furniture and fixture to record it, to record the related loan on the books, and to, and to record then, they're going to have to record depreciation on the PP&E property plant and equipment. If we go back to the P&L, notice there's no uh, change on the profit and loss. Sometimes you have to refresh these screens, by the way, by, by selecting the URL and then refresh the screen or just hit enter. And that'll allow it to, to make the screen more fresh. Now it's a, the screen has now been freshened up. And so the numbers would change, but there's no change to the numbers. Nothing happened to the P&L. I will be printing the P&L uh, after most of the sections and providing that for you. So you can kind of like look at the profit and loss after each of the transactions or each of the presentations.